You know, there was a whole season of my life where when people used to ask me how I was doing, my standard answer was exhausted. Maybe you've been there too, right? Whether it's financial worries, the holiday season that has us, perhaps it's fear of missing out, or some other form of anxiety. The scripture says that the Lord gives sleep to those he loves, but oftentimes our habits and rhythms get in the way of accessing that sleep. How do we, as followers of Jesus, sample and actually live into the abundant life he came to give us, right? How do we experience peace and rest? In this episode, we're gonna talk about my top two recommendations for what you can do to begin to not have to tell people you're tired and exhausted all of the time. Brothers and sisters in Christ, it is time to take the hill. Friends, welcome to episode five of the Take the Hill show. Before we dive in, I want to give you a gift. Uh, at this time of the holidays, I have put together a free workshop called the 30 Day Spiritual Transformation Challenge. It helps you walk step by step through some of the things we're about to introduce in this very video about how you can orient your life in rhythms of grace to actually experience the kingdom of God on Monday morning. This is the stuff I would ask you about if you and I sat down one on one to have lunch. Friends, it's totally free and I'm telling you if you do it, it will change your life. Head over to takethehill.tv and sign up for the free Spiritual Transformation Challenge right now and get started preparing to live into your calling and fulfill it in this coming new year. It's totally free. So without further ado, you know, the scripture says, it is vain for us to stay up late and to rise early, to eat the fruit of painful and fearful uh, labor when the Lord gives sleep to those he loves. And yet I find myself many times awake at two and three in the morning, running through all of the things that I should have done, all of the things uh, that are causing me anxiety and fear about the future. How do we begin to set ourselves up for success, particularly when it comes to sleep as the people of God to access the rest that he says he longs to give us? I'm filming a short mini course right now called Base Camp. And I want to show you the first two episodes where we begin to deal with these very questions. What are the top two practical steps that we can take to make sure that we access the rest that the Lord says he has come to give us? Let's dive in. Step number one. Are you ready? Take the technology out of your bedroom. <laughs> I know you're cussing me already. Take the technology out of your bedroom. I remember years ago uh, when I realized this was becoming an issue for my wife and I, I went to her and just said, hey, um, uh, I need your help with something. Uh, I think I think we need to take the tech out of our bedroom. It's keeping us up too late. Uh, I can't go to sleep. Uh, I'm thinking about all the things. I'm always wanting to read something else. Uh, would you help me help us and make this decision? In her kindness, she, she said yes. And so this is what we did. We bought a charging station, a really nice one that made the phones like kind of have a place in the kitchen. Um, it, I'll put a link in the description below, but it's a place where we charge our phone, I could charge my watch, and, and it's the, the home for things, right? The other thing we did was we bought an old school alarm clock, a really nice one. Had two alarms, one for me, one for her, had a nice light feature, some dimmers, like <laughs> had a nap timer. I'm getting excited about an alarm clock, I realized that. But we need an alarm clock, and other than that, we took it all out, the phones, the computers, the televisions. We took it out of our bedroom. And uh, let me tell you what happened. We went to sleep. Uh, there was a peace that entered into our bedroom, not just another room that was like the other ones, except it had a bed in it. Um, our bedroom became a sanctuary where when we'd shut the door, our bodies instantly triggered and went, <sighs> okay. I'm preparing for bed now. Um, it's like a bedtime routine for kids. Uh, it's amazing what it does for an adult. Friends, there are countless studies. I'm sure you've read them on the effects of red light or blue light. I don't care what color the light is, but light's ability to hinder our brain from shutting down. What we found is not only is taking the tech out of the bedroom a step that we make sure we take every night, but it's also a dashboard, right? It's kind of like our RPM gauge 
it tells us if we're revving too too fast are we over revved like sometimes you get so amped from the day you can't turn it off and the phone doesn't help you turn it off there are more uh, studies further about the scrolling effect right and the jackpot effect of like maybe the next thing will be what i'm looking for it's just another hit another endorphin release and our brains literally can't turn off those studies say that having tech before bed causes anxiety depression isolation fear guys none, none of these things uh, are helpful robbing each other from sleep actually sleep deprivation is a form of torture there's a scripture that says it is not good for you to rise up early and go to bed late, burning the candle at both ends when the Lord actually longs to give as a gift sleep to those he loves. And it's my belief that we're actually holding ourselves hostage uh, with our technology. Maybe it's not a phone for you. Maybe it's Netflix. Maybe it's watching the game before bed. But you and I know the kind of like hype that comes not only from watching a game right before bed, but from like Netflix, just the autoplay feature, right? Like five seconds before my next episode, like trying to turn off your favorite show. It's almost impossible. So we found we just take it out of our bedroom. I can hear the objections. I know that this can be a frustrating ask. Friends, trust me. This is just like a weight loss program. Before we start eating healthy things and doing the right things, we got to stop doing like eating the Twinkies, right? So <laughs> take the deck out of the bedroom. I'll give you a link to the charging station we use for my wife and I and to the alarm clock we love. I don't care what one you get, uh, but I don't want making that decision to get in your way. So I'll provide you those links below. Friends, take the tech out of your bedroom and watch what happens. I can't tell you uh, how much this one thing will affect your life. If we're gonna take the hill, uh, we gotta start at the beginning. So step number two, you ready? I'm gonna blow your mind. We're building our base camp. Step number two is go to bed. I know, it's earth shaking. And yet if you read every major article about the secrets to success from Elon Musk, right? Some of the world's greatest minds, Elon Musk, Warren Buffett, uh, Bill Gates, they all say, in their top list of things that they do is get six to eight hours of sleep every night. They are committed to it because they know how critical it is to functioning well tomorrow. I'll say it again, the scripture is clear. It is unwise to wake up early and go to bed late, burning the candle at both ends when the Lord gives sleep to those he loves. Now, I wanna be honest with you, I hate this. Because I, why I, while I love to sleep and I love to sleep in, um, I'm a sports fan and I love to watch the game, right? But if I'm honest, as a sports fan, there's always a big game on. I'm a baseball fan. There's like 163 games a year. Never mind the postseason, like football. There's always a big game on. Monday night, sometimes Thursday, Saturday night sometimes, Sunday, morning, afternoon, night. Like there's always a game on. If you're a Netflix junkie, like by the midweek, my wife and I just want to binge our favorite show, right? But they have the autoplay feature. So after five seconds, if I haven't made a decision to turn it off, I'm into another episode. I can't tell you how many times I have regretted trying to go to sleep. And now it's 11, 12, 1 o'clock. It's already tomorrow and I haven't gone to sleep today, right? Friends, we have, we have to put our big boy pants on and go to bed. Uh, six, seven, eight, nine hours. You know what you need you've uh, just got to be honest with yourself, reverse engineer it. If you got to get up at six, you got to go to bed at 10, right? Um, as a, an identifier, this is not only something to accomplish, but it's also on our dashboard. This serves as like the battery gauge. Um, the battery has to be alternated, right? It has to be constantly tended to in order to stay fresh. You can't not sleep five nights in a row and hope to catch up on Saturday morning and feel like a champ. We have to go to bed and we have to do it regularly to keep our battery charged. If you don't, uh, the battery light is gonna come on and you're gonna just uh, begin to drain slowly over time until uh, you feel hung over and you burn out. We have to go to bed. If you're a married couple, uh, let me give you a quick shout out as well. Uh, brother, you got to go to bed with your wife. Sister, go to bed with your husband. Um, that is critical. I can't tell you not only the things you'll avoid, um, like working too late, uh, 
looking at things you ought not to on the internet, uh, watching shows you shouldn't, living a separate life after your spouse. Like I can't tell you how many relationships have ended in divorce because she went to bed and he stayed up for two hours, right? But the benefits are unbelievable. I'm gonna be real honest with you. The conversation you want and, and the relational intimacy and uh, the, the sex that you want is on the other side of going to bed. When you've taken the tech out of the bedroom and you close the door, it's just you and Jesus, <laughs> right? Like you're either gonna read a book, talk, make love, or go to sleep. But what you're not gonna do is wish you had taken the time to actually have those conversations. You're gonna remove the excuse that uh, I'm too tired, um, I can't be with you tonight. Uh, I wish we would just talk more. I wish we had more intimacy. Like. Um, those things are all provided for in abundance when you remove the tech and go to bed. It breeds togetherness, proximity, and you wake up refreshed, um, ready to actually uh, lead one another's hearts and to be the man and women of God that God's called you to be. Now look, I understand that for some of us, you may work second shift, you may work third shift, and your schedule doesn't allow for that all of that with grace, I totally get that. Those are absolutely exceptions. But if that is not the case, whether you're single or married, go to bed. You know if you need six, seven, eight, nine hours of sleep, be honest with yourself, reverse engineer it. If you gotta wake up at six, go to bed at 10. Uh, it's a little bit of math, but you can do it. I don't mean to sound uh, condescending or like a parent, but friends, we have to go to bed. Uh, the Lord gives sleep to those he loves and we are refusing the gift of God by always having an occasion, an excuse to stay up late when what we need to do is rest. I love you. I hope you're taking those two things uh, well. Take the tech out of the bedroom and go to bed. Um, it will change your life. And, and you, you know that that's what you need to do. Uh, you're feeling uh, shame or guilt about it. Don't feel those things anymore. Just do it. Just tonight, tomorrow starts today, tonight, remove the tech and go to sleep. Uh, you will thank me uh, if you stay the course and continue to do this in 30 days. If you did nothing else, uh, you will feel like a better human. You will have a better relationship with your spouse and you won't be so tired all the time. People won't say, how you doing? And you'll be like, ooh, I'm tired. It's been a lot lately. That will go away if you take the tech out of the bedroom and go to sleep.